Today we're going to be talking about the properties of bio of water biology students. Woo, tongue tied already. And let's jump in. Before we jump into water, remember that pure water is neutral, 7. And on either side of the pH scale, we have acids and bases. Acids are from lower than 7. Bases are above 7. And of course, again, water is best at neutral, but in the nature, water is not always exactly neutral. So just keep that in mind. Okay. So that's an important review or reminder. Let's jump into the actual properties of water that are related to water structure and the fact that it's polar and it does hydrogen bonding that we did from last set of notes. So there are about eight properties of water and we're going to go through each of them, make sure they're all the vocab and titles are probably highlighted and sticking out in your notes. And you might want to write examples or do some little drawings for yourself for certain ones. So our first one is cohesion, which means molecules of the same kind are attracted or stick to one another. This means that we have two water molecules sticking to each other. And that's how they would form a droplet, because the different water molecules are sticky to one another. This is compared to the second thing we're going to be talking about, adhesion, which is that water will attract to unlike molecules. All right? So I like to think about this as a Band-Aid is sticking to you, and those are two different things. So this is a little hard. So let's look at some of this in detail, okay? So just so you know, again, cohesion is water sticking to another water. A lot of students like this adorable little cartoony picture versus adhesion is water sticking to something else such as the fibers of a piece of paper or water not only sticking to itself to make a droplet what is water also sticking to here what's it sticking to a leaf the fact that water sticks onto the leaf which is that that's adhesion okay so again cohesion is because water molecules are attracted to each other they're forming hydrogen bonds Okay, water sticking to water, making sure we're getting it. Adhesion, on the other hand, is water sticking to other things. Another example of adhesion is water sticking to glass. When we look at a graduated cylinder, we'd see that there's a thing called a meniscus because the water will slide up a little bit and stick to the sides of the glass. This is because water will have charged attractions to things like glass. Okay, very cool. So here's that meniscus in real life. Look at that. It's hard to read what it is. Remember, we always read from the bottom of the meniscus. Let's keep going. So that's two of our examples. This was water sticking to other things. Adhesion. Other things. So before we move on, let's practice adhesion and cohesion one more time. In your head, try to think about how we're seeing an example of cohesion. Do you see water sticking to other water here? I sure do. I see it forming droplets. The fact that they're these circular droplets is because water won't let go of the other water molecules. Do you see adhesion here? I sure do. I see water sticking to something else. Specifically, this is a spider web. The fact that water is sticking to the spider web is adhesion. So yeah, this is an example of adhesion and cohesion. Okay, let's move on to other properties of water. Third property of water. Water has a very high surface tension. Surface tension is a vocab word. It's not highlighted here, but it should be highlighted, bolded, starred, kissed in your notes. So what is surface tension? Surface, it's a surface layer of water molecules that act like a film or almost like a floor on top of the surface of the water. You might have seen this if you've gone to a pond. You might have seen a cute little bug called a water strider somehow be able to stand on the top of the water. If we look closely enough here, we can see that it's pushing along water. It looks like water is like saran wrap here where it's able to put indents and it's not falling through. Through. This only occurs for really lightweight species like the water strider and it is using the fact that water is attracted to other water molecules and it's not falling through. This is because of polar. All right? Really it's helpful that water is adhesive and cohesive here but we call the film part on top that this guy's standing on we call this surface tension so if i were you in my notes i would actually draw a cute little creature standing on top of water and point at the surface of the water and say 
stretched film, surface of water, surface tension. That's what I would do. Number four, vocab word, capillary action. Capillary is a thin tube. You actually have capillaries. They're your blood vessels that are very thin. But anyhow, even thin tubes that are inside plants or any sort of thin tubes, water is able to move up them. It actually uses adhesion to grab at the sides and water will pull on other water molecules called cohesion and move up the tube. This is what allows water to move up along a paper towel because it's grabbing the paper fibers and grabbing onto the water molecules behind it and it keeps climbing. Similarly, you could do a really cool experiment where water can climb up if it's died up the stem, a small tube, and get to the flower and make a beautiful colored flower. All right, pretty cool, but it has to be what? Thin tubes, that's what capillary action is. So if it were me, I would draw a picture of a thin tube and I would point that the water's moving up the tube. That's what I would draw. Next one, water moderates temperature. Another word would be stabilizes temperature. And that means water hates changing temperature. It, it doesn't change temperature easily. It takes a lot of heat to increase the temperature of water. It also takes a lot of heat before it cools down. So water, if you go to the beach in the early summer, is it warm yet? No, it's still pretty cold if you went in June. It doesn't really warm up until August because water takes a really long time to warm up. All right. Similarly, to get really cold in the winter, it's really hard for water to really get super cold quickly. It will be moderate temperature or medium temperature for a very long time. I like to call this water is stubborn. So you could draw the ocean and say cold water or something like that. Just know that water is stubborn and doesn't change temperatures easily. Next one. Oops, the title's missing. The next one is called evaporative cooling. This is the fact that water can carry heat when it evaporates. This is how organisms actually cool off. We know that how do we cool off through homeostasis if we get too hot? Dogs pant, but we as humans, we sweat. So our sweat, which is on our skin, when the sweat evaporates, the water will pull on other water molecules, and as they break away to become a gas, from a liquid sweat on your skin to a gas, ah, oh, it's becoming gas from sweat, that'll actually pull heat away from your body. It's amazing. So again, this is actually happening on the dog's tongue, which is why panting works, but really it's that the water being on your skin and it evaporating that pulls the heat away as it evaporates. Pretty wild. So we call this evaporative cooling. What I would write a note is about sweating, all right? And the evaporation pulls the heat away. This one's pretty cool and we usually know a little bit about it. Water expands when it freezes, all right? So density as a vocab word, is the amount of matter in a given volume, how much stuff is in a particular volume. And we know that ice, which is solid water, it floats. This is pretty weird, okay? Ice is less dense than liquid water, which is why it floats on top. If this didn't happen, like most things, like so for instance, um, rubbing alcohol, the the solid thing actually the solid version of rubbing alcohol actually sinks which is really weird ice on the other hand floats right which is really cool and that's because really awesome for us on our planet because what's living underneath this frozen ice creatures so if ice were to freeze from the bottom up instead of the top down all of the little creatures in the water would die so this is really, really interesting. Don't do the experiment at home, really, at all, because it's dangerous and you shouldn't ruin stuff. But you, if you froze ever a water bottle with too much water in it, it might explode the water bottle, right? Don't do that at home, but that's true because it expands. It's bigger than when it was liquid. Last but not least... Water is the universal solvent, meaning it dissolves many things. All of our cells are over 70% water. Our cytoplasm is mostly water. We are 70% water. Almost everything in our body is just 
things like salt and sugar dissolved in water, which is a really weird thing to think about. And water is how we transport our waste and get our nutrients. Pretty wild. So you made it through our properties of water. In class, we're going to do a couple little mini experiments to practice these things. I'll see you then. Bye.